By the end of this video, you're going to know how to animate your characters to run around and stand idle. You're going to learn the basic fundamentals of animation blueprints and how you can use them in your game dev projects. And we're going to go over how state machines work and how you can utilize them in your games. So the core of animating characters in games, it comes down to animation blueprints in Unreal Engine. The way you create an animation blueprint is that you right click in the content browser, you go to animation, and then you'll see an animation blueprint option here. You click on that and then it tells you to choose a skeleton. So as we talked about, animations are associated with skeletons because each skeleton moves differently. Um, again, you can think of it as the real world scenario as well. Everyone with different skeletal compositions move different from each other, run differently from each other. So in my case, I'm using the Wukong base character. So I'm just going to choose the Wukong skeleton. In your case, whatever you're using, if you're using the UI5 mannequin, you want to choose that one. So I'm going to choose the Wukong skeleton, hit create, and it's going to create the animation blueprint for me. I'm going to call it ABP, short for animation blueprint. And I'm going to put Wukong underscore tutorial. And I'm going to create this animation blueprint right here. And I'm going to double click to open it. So here's the animation blueprints. So on the top, you can see we have two tabs, anim graph and event graph. If you're not seeing the anim graph or the event graph, you can just double click on the left here in the left plane. You can double click on the anim graph and it'll open it for you. So the anim graph is where most of the magic is going to happen. As you can see here, we have an output pose and, uh, and a result pose here. So this is the final result that the character, the final animation and pose that the character is going to play. So right now you can see there's nothing going here. So the character is standing idle. So this is what the anim graph does. You tell the um, output pose what, what resulting animation you want it to play and it's going to result in the character playing it. There's also another tab here called the event graph, which I'm going to open here. So if you worked with blueprints before in Unreal Engine, it's a system you use to code. And over here, you use the event graph to code whatever logic you want in your animations. And we're going to get into that um, a little bit later um, in this video. So for now, we're going to go back to the anim graph. So if you look at the bottom right of your screen, you're going to see an anim preview tab and an asset browser tab. So for now, we're not going to do anything with the anim preview. You go ahead and open the asset browser and you'll, you will be able to see all the animation sequences associated with the skeleton of your character. So I have a lot of um, assets here because I'm using the Wukong um, asset from the uh, Epic Store. And I'll put a link below um, and it's free. Um, you can see I have a lot of animations here. So just to show you how this works, if I drag the idle animation onto onto the screen here in the anim graph, um, it'll create a um, animation sequence. And you can see there's a pose icon here. So if I drag from here to the results and I hit compile, every time you make changes, you will need to hit compile for it to work. So I'm going to hit compile here or you can hit compile here you'll see that our character immediately goes into the idle position. So just like that, um, we create a animation uh, for our character. So as you can see, it, these, this is how long this animation is. And when it gets to the end, um, it's just going to stop and the character is going to freeze just like that. If we want it to repeat, uh, what we can do is we can click on this idle animation. And on the right in the details panel, you can scroll all the way down. You'll see a loop animation. You can just check mark that and then hit compile again and this way the um, character won't stop at all one other option you have here which is can be useful at times is the uh, play rate right now it's playing at normal speed but you could make it faster like if i change this to two and i hit compile you can see like uh, wukong on uh you know just had a drink of red bull and you know it's like the idle animation sp speed it up so right now, if I hit save and I hit play, um, you'll see that nothing happens. Our character is still in T pose and it's not animating properly. So in order for our animation blueprint to work, um, just like we talked last time, we need to connect it to our character. So I'm going to choose my character here. I'm going to open the blueprint for my character, click on the character, and then come down to the animation section on the details panel. In the animation mode, we're going to say use animation blueprint. And for the anim class, we're going to use um, ABP Wukong tutorial. Once you do that, you hit compile and save. 
and you can hit play, you'll see that your character is now in idle uh, animation. And right now I have speeded it up to uh, be two times the speed and it looks pretty weird. But when you move around now, the character is still in idle. Uh, it's still playing the idle animation and that's not what we wanted to do, right? We wanted to not be idle. So now we're going to talk about how to do that uh, in the animation blueprint. So in order to show you how that works, let's go back to the whiteboard. So we want the character to be idle when it's not moving. As soon as the character starts to move, we want to go into the run animation, right? So starts to move. And then when it ends moving, we want it to go back there. So what you're seeing here on my screen, like whatever we just wrote here, this is called a state machine in computer science. Uh, and this is how you do things where you want your animation to repeat until something happens. This is what you use. So we're going to now see how to do this exact thing in Unreal Engine. One thing to understand is we need to um, explain to Unreal Engine what it means when we say the character starts to move. And the way you do that is you measure the speed of the character. And then if it's bigger than, let's say, 10, for example, this is just some arbitrary number. But if the speed is bigger than 10, then we're, we would say that it means that the character is moving. But whenever his speed is less than 10, we say that the character is not moving anymore. So we need to define this speed thing uh, for Unreal Engine to understand when a character is moving and when a character is not moving. So let's go back to Unreal Engine now. All right, so we're going to delete this idle state here. Uh, we're not going to need it here anymore. And we're going to come into our animation blueprint, right click and search for state machine, just like we talked about. And we're going to, it's going to create a state machine. You can change its name. I'm going to make it movement, for example. Um, now you can double click on your state machine and it'll open a new window for you. So we're going to try to imitate that same diagram that we drew on the whiteboard. So this is the entry. So this is the state that every state machine starts in. And we want it to automatically go into another state. So the way we do that is we, we can drag from the entry uh, and let it go. And it will allow us to create a state. Or we can just right click and um, click on add state. And then we can give our state a name. And I'm going to call it idle just like we had in our diagram. And then I'm going to drag from the entry to the idle state. So right now the idle state, it doesn't do anything. Uh, so based on our diagram, we want it to go into the idle animation. So we can double click on the idle and then we can drag the idle animation just like we did before and then drop it here and then drag from this uh, pose to the result. So what this is saying is whenever we're in the idle state, we want it to play the idle animation and we want it to loop. So just like before, we check mark the loop animations and now we can hit compile and save. And right now you can see that uh, our character is not animating. And the reason for that is if we come back to the movement, you can come back to the previous um, level. If you look at the top here, we're in the idle state. We can come back to the movement, which is the state machine. And then we can come back all the way to the anim graph. So right now we have our state machine. The reason uh, Wukong is not animating is because we need to connect the resulting pose to the output pose. Now, if we hit compile, um, it's going to automatically go to the idle and you'll see the idle animation. If I double click on the state machine, I can, you can see that right now we're in the idle state on our state machine and it's not going anywhere from here. Well, because we haven't uh, defined how it should go to the other state, right? So uh, now in this step, we're going to add the running state and you should see uh, Wukong animating and running around. So now we need a running state. So I'm going to again, right click, add state, and then we're going to call this one running. And then we are going to double click on the running state and we're going to add the run animation. So on the Wukong asset, it's called jog. So I'm going to run, look for jog forward and I'm going to drag it here and I'm going to connect the uh, output from the jog into the results. So now we're in the running state and we're saying that whenever we're in the running state, we want to play the jog forward animation and we want it to repeat as long as we're inside this running state. So if I compile and save, come back here, you'll see that there's no connection between idle and running. 
Um, but we need to define the rule first, right? We need to say whenever the character's speed is bigger than 10, um, for example, go to the running state. So how do we do that? Um, so the way you do logic like that, if you recall in the beginning of the video, we're going to use the event graph. So if you're new to um, Blueprint, um, this is maybe a bit difficult for you, but I'll try my best to explain that as well without going too deep. So in the Blueprint, in the event graph, we're going to be able to define logic that relates to our um, character here. If you recall from the first video in our series, we drew this diagram and we said an actor in Unreal Engine, everything's an actor, and then um, it can be subgrouped into a pawn, and then it can be subgrouped into a character. And we said that we have a character, which is a pawn right now, right? So what we can do is we can get access to our pawn and see what its speed is every second in the game or every frame of the game. So back in Unreal Engine, you see this node here where it says try to get pawn owner. That's what it's trying to do. It's trying to access our main character. And what we can do here is there is a function we can use to get the speed of the character. And that call, that, that function is called get velocity. Right. So it's what this is doing is it's accessing this character, this BP Wukong, the, the pawn, which is getting possessed by the player, which is moving around and it's going to get the velocity and the velocity. We only care about it moving in the X and Y direction, right? Because whenever we actually play, you'll see that we're not jumping up or down. We're just going left and right forward or back right so we only care about those directions so we don't really care about the speed um up or down so what we are going to do is we're going to say we want the x y value of this um speed so it's going to say get vector length x y and this resulting is this resulting uh, length is the speed that we care about so i'm going to promote this to a variable and over here, you'll see that it created a variable for us, and I'm going to call it speed. And when do we need to set the speed of the character, right? So in a game, um, if you've heard of the concept of FPS, whenever you're playing a game, frames per second, uh, we want to know exactly in every frame if the character is moving or not, right? So we need to know every frame whether the character is moving so we can access its speed and see if we need to play the running animation or do we need to play the idle animation. So the way we do that is there's a node here called um, update animation, which this node runs every frame. So if we connect this to here, what it ends up doing is it ends up setting the speed of the character every frame. So we'll know whenever the player stops or whenever the player is moving. So once you have that set up, hit compile and save. And now we can go back into the movement tab, or if you don't have it open, you can go into your anim graph, open to the movement tab. And now we're gonna drag a arrow by left clicking and holding and connecting it to the running um, state. Now, if I double click on this, this is where you can set a rule of when it should go from idle to running. So if I double click on this, um, it's there is a result node and there is a uh, can enter transition. So this is basically saying when can we allow it to enter this transition and go to the next state. And we talked about it in our diagram. We want it to move to the state whenever the speed is bigger than some number. So if you go to your bottom left, you can drag that speed variable onto your screen. And we want to get the speed of the character and we want to check if it's bigger than you can choose a number here, but you can choose zero. You can choose the um, 10 as well. Uh, so I'm going to just choose 10 uh, because the speed of the character is much higher than 10 whenever it's moving. And then I'm going to go and connect it here. So what this means is whenever the speed is bigger than 10, go into the next state. So I'm going to hit compile and save. And now if I go back to the movement thing, you can see that um, we have now two states, the idle state and the running state. And we have a rule here, which we're saying whenever the speed is bigger than 10, go and play the running animation. So let's play and see if that works. So here's our character. And <clears throat> now I'm going to start click here and you can see that our character goes into the running state, but it looks like it's stuck, right? It's not going back to idle. Um, 
if you want pause the video do you know why this is happening or not all right so let's go back here and i want to show you something if you actually go and on the top here while the game is on if you click on here and choose your character it shows you what state what state it's in even as the game is running so as you can see the character went into idle and now it's in running but it's stuck here even though it's not moving and the reason for that is we didn't define a rule for it to come back to the idle state so let's do that so right now whenever speed is bigger than 10 it goes into running and then it's stuck but what we want to happen is whenever the speed is less than 10 we want it to come back to the idle state so i'm going to click on the running and drag to the idle state and i'm going to double click on this and we're going to set a rule here again uh see if you can do this one yourself but you want to drag the speed here get the speed and then if it's less than um 10 or choose like nine for example it doesn't matter because the speed goes to zero uh, but this is just to reduce the chance of something buggy happening and i'm going to connect it here and we're going to say whenever the speed is less than nine you can transition back into the idle state so now we have a rule for going into running and we have a rule for going back to idle so let's go ahead and compile and save this don't forget to compile and save uh, or else nothing will work so you're going to hit play now we're going to move and then you're going to see it goes back move and it goes back so if i make this a bit smaller and i'm going to bring it over here you can see that right now we're in the idle as soon as we move we go into running and then we come back to idle as soon as we move you go back to running and we go back to idle and right now we have a we have a fully animated character that is moving around and it works perfectly fine so that's how you use state machines uh, to create animations that are continuous, right? Animations that you want the character to keep playing until something else happens. And this is different than animations, for example, like abilities, uh, instant abilities. Whenever you play an ability and you want your character to swing the sword and then stop. Um, in that case, you just want the animation to play once um, and there's no, there's no need to create a state machine to... Um, check the states for it as well because we're not continuously doing something so that i hope that that made sense and you were able to animate your character to walk and move around in the next um, video i'm going to show you how to use blend spaces in animation blueprints and that'll help make uh make characters for example transition from idling to walking to running in one single state uh, and it'll make it a much smoother transition as well Thanks for watching and if you have any questions, leave it in the comments.